<laughs> hey, it's Craig and Steven from the podcast Meet Me at the Table. Both Steven and I started this podcast to meet people where they are. You're about to listen to this segment called Everyone Has a Story, where we hear from the many people that have been silenced from the church. Uh, this segment is to continue to meet people where they are and give people the opportunity to speak about why they left the church. We are here to listen and look forward to hearing your story. We'll see you there. Hello, I'm Craig Seibert. And I'm Stephen Duenas. And we're the hosts of Meet Me at the Table podcast. Uh, it's a podcast focusing mainly on Christianity uh, and how it's lost its personal connection to people. Uh, but we're going to leave the table open to discuss other areas as well. Uh, we are going to talk about issues like women in leadership roles in the church, acceptance of those in the LGBTQ plus community, uh, or racial indifferences. Uh, we set the table to be heard for both sides uh, in a respectful manner. Yeah. So today, this is our another segment of Everyone Has a Story. Uh, this is where we just uh, reach out to people and hear out their stories. So Phil, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Hi, I'm Phil and um, I am 32 and I live in uh, Des Moines, Iowa. And um, I, I work for um, Meta as an AV uh, maintenance technician, which has been uh, about in the last year and a half, which has been a really cool opportunity. I've been enjoying um, that so far. And I also um, was a drummer. Well, I am a drummer, but <laughs> I say was because that was church days, Phil. Um, and then um, photographer and videographer as well, um, kind of freelance kind of stuff. Um, so that's what I usually do to keep myself busy and um, married. I uh, have a cat and two dogs and... Um, yeah, we've been married for, oh, geez, nine years now, eight years. Wow. Oh, she's gonna, well, as I said, we'll cut probably. that, we'll cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> She'll correct me later. It's fine. <laughs> it's getting to that point where it's like, you I, know, let's see one of these years. I celebrate yeah. 16 this coming Friday. So, and I actually had to do the same thing this morning. Is it 15 or is it 16? And I actually asked her because we're at the point where it doesn't really matter at this point. So. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but uh, musician, I don't think Stephen mentioned that. So you actually played in the church worship team, right? Yep. I yeah. was a drummer for ever, um, probably starting like my sophomore year in high school. I started learning and just kept going from there. So well, yeah. actually that ties into the, the second question that we normally ask is tell us a little bit about your time in the church and kind of start yeah. from scratch. And, and if that's, that's where you start, go for it from there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, my life in the church started back in like second or third grade. Um, my dad got saved and started taking us to church. Um, been, uh, we went to the same church pretty much my whole time from, childhood to graduation. Um, and then I was even a pastor's kid at, at one point, almost a missionary's kid. Uh, they wanted to be a missionary at some point, or they were in the process of becoming a missionary and then it fell through. And then the church we attended at the time um, hired him as the membership pastor. So, um, and that went on for about 13 years. Um, and then I helped plan a church um, from our home church to another part of town left that church to the a church that we lived in um, south of town in Norwalk. Um, oh boy. And then <laughs> left that church. That was kind of the start of my process of leaving the church and try to attend a different church. Um, and then ultimately just kind of found myself not really agreeing with a lot of the cultures and practices going on in the church. So um, it's been a process of uh, about two and a half years or so of my eventual leaving of church. So what was there a continual de denomination you were attending throughout those churches much, or were they different? Pretty much uh, non-denominational, but okay. pretty much all of them were members of the Southern Baptist convention. So it Got was it. at Northern Southern Baptist where it was, they claim non-denominational, but pretty much just stuck to pretty progressive Baptist. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, both Craig yeah. and I attended a non-denominational last, um, and mm -hmm. then previously before that was uh, Baptist. So two different areas, but also very similar somewhat. Well, then yeah, one has drums, one doesn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a really good way of putting it. I mean, the music is 
very different between those two different denominations. Very different. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Now, so you told us a little bit about your church uh, story. What ultimately was it that led to make that tough decision? I mean, you were heavily involved, potentially a missionary's child, a pastor's child. So what was it that, you know, ultimately made you make that tough decision? And you're saying that you're also married. So that's not just a decision that you sometimes can make. It's, it's usually a joint decision. Right. What, what was it? Um, so my journey started back in 2020 during the George Floyd uh, protests in our town. Um, I was asked to attend one to take photos and videos for a uh, local hip hop artist here to do some footage for a music video he was working on. And once I attended it, I just it kind of shook my whole <laughs> existence at that point. Um, and so I started getting very active on social media, posting a lot of BLM content and stuff. And um, mm. the church congregation, some people in the congregation had approached our church leadership about what Phil's doing <laughs> um, and kind of, you know, they're concerned. They were, um, you know, worried I was who knows, you know, standing up for black people's rights, I guess that was enough to get them to be worried. So, um, I, it's, it was crazy. And I got pulled in for church le or for church discipline. This was my first experience with church discipline and that whole process. And it didn't go down the way they wanted it to. Um, they basically, uh, pulled, I was supposed to play worship one Sunday, the week I was being very active and they pulled me from it, but they were supposed to do it in the opposite order of talk to me first, see where my you know heart posture was at is what they called it. Then make the decision if I should still play, but the worship leader decided to just pull me anyways. Um, and then have the conversation later, they apologized, but, um, really just didn't, you know, sit well with us <laughs> and we couldn't, it just didn't feel right after that, even though we did kind of forgive them. Um, and then just, you know, the COVID response, just the response to racial injustice and, um, and really a lot of the sexual, um, assault and different assault things that's been coming to light, you know, with SC, you know, the Southern Baptist convention mm -hmm. report that came out. And even that, I am sure you guys saw that video that circulated of that other church where yep. the pastor admitted to adultery and ended up being, you know, rape and, um, but they yep. ended up kind of praying over that pastor at the end of it and left the victim to go walk off yeah. on their own. Um, those were those. So those last couple of months back when that happened, that kind of was like the final like fog lifting of kind of that coming out of the brainwash kind of feel um, and kind of made me start going, how much of this have I been lied to about? Have I been complacent about? And um, started making me question kind of everything that was taught to me, basically. Um, yeah. And so, and like I mentioned earlier today to Steve was like, I'm also like, I've come to the, the point where I've dropped the name as, uh, dropped the term Christian for my way of identifying myself. So. so not only did you kind of get pushed out of the church, both physically and, and mentally, but you almost got pushed. Well, I will get to that point in a minute, but you 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 may have gotten pushed out of the faith in general, yeah. and relating those two things, and that's one of the things Steve and I talk a lot about is the relation of following Christ's way or Christ's way of doing things and Christ's way of being to other people, like the Black Lives Matter movement and the church, and those two things end up getting tied so tightly together when you're in it. And both Steven and I, again, are musicians. I, I played guitar and he played guitar as well and sang in the, the, the worship team. And you get, you get so ingrained and you get so sucked in on what you're doing there that you just kind of lose sight of what they're really doing. And now when they called you in, did they like pull like posts and show them to you and say, hey, this is, this is the issue or... Um, no. So the series of events was Wednesday. So in that week, the Wednesday, our worship leader texts me going, Hey, I made a set change. I'm going to have so-and-so play um, instead of you. And I was like, okay, no worries. Thursday, I get a call. I just get a call from the youth pastor. Cause I was volunteering at youth group at that time. Just kind of going like, Hey man, just checking in on you. Um, I love all the stuff you've been posting. Cause he's kind of, <laughs> he, he actually kind of admired some of the stuff that I was kind of trying to get across in my profile and what I was trying yeah. to do. Um, but then he was just like, yeah, but I just want to make sure you're like, you know, keeping your, 
you know, keeping it Christ centered and all this. And basically it was just kind of like a, you know, pump the brakes a bit was kind of what he was trying to yeah. subtly tell me. You're um, burning bridges by doing this. <laughs> yeah. So, but they never mentioned that they were contemplating pulling me from worship. Like that was never, like it was never told to me bluntly. I had to literally figure it out that night after the phone call. I was like, wait, he changed the set list. And then I get this weird call. <laughs> This seems ding, ding, kind of ding. <laughs> but, and it was funny. We literally had a youth leadership cookout the next day after that phone call. And I pulled him aside afterwards. And I was like, are these like, is this what you called me about and what Adam did related? And he goes, um, yeah. <laughs> and so he was like, he wasn't supposed to pull that trick or make that decision without my um, assessment of how or his gauge of where my heart was or whatever. And he did anyways. Um, and so they apologized, but yes, it was very, and they, it's just, yeah, it was so dumb. And I just, um, that's the first time I experienced church discipline. Yeah. And yeah, I'm dumbfounded by this. Like I this am too. I don't know what to church say. <laughs> discipline. You had church mm-hmm. discipline for this, but the pastors and the SBC and all these things, they cannot be held accountable or have even have discipline. It's just, swept underneath the rug, but someone that's supporting social injustice, which is what Jesus did. It's in the Bible. You're being disciplined for doing the very thing that we are called to do. That is Christ center. (laughs) Well, yeah, I was being disciplined for basically saying hashtag BLM because (laughs) them, you know, BLM is just a communist Marxist evil corporation hell bent on promoting gay people and says Fox News. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. So to them, that was the issue more than my passion for social justice. Because they, and you know, when you approach them about that, they're like, oh yeah, like that's great. That's what God calls us to do. Sure. But like, don't do it that way <laughs> is basically what it was. So don't love this way. Love and this I had, way. Really? Right. And I had, had and I had gotten um sorry, I try not to cut you guys off. Um, but no, I had fine. gotten um <laughs> I had gotten a, like a message from another person in the congregation who was like, um, Hey, let, let's get together and have a talk. I want to talk to you about some of the things you've been posting. I was like, you know, I, I'm good. We, cause he had been debating with me and been very vocal about everything I posted. Um, and then he was like, well, I'm just concerned since you volunteer at youth and you're going to be near my kids. I want to make sure you're not oh teaching my, my kids certain things that I don't agree. And I was like, yo, <laughs> like I've already had these conversations with the pastors and they're all still okay with me serving as a youth leader they hadn't mentioned that they wanted to pull me from that. And so I was like, if you have an issue, talk to them. So that like, that was the kind of stuff I was dealing with was just like, it was so crazy. I like, I'm sitting here going like, what, how is what I'm doing considered? Like, okay. So, so I need to unpack this. Did they, they disciplined you, but did yeah. they actually ask you to not come back or was it this, this was your choice or did they ask you not to come back? No, they never actually asked me to okay. not come back. It was, okay. Um, I kind of, we had kind of left that situation as like, we made a mistake. I admitted they made a mistake. And I said, you know, yeah, I can see the, that you guys do sincerely feel bad for how the process went and how it was supposed to go. Um, But then slowly just started getting that, like that whole situation just wasn't good at all. Like it just, the whole process of it. And even the idea behind it was what really just turned me off. Um, and then just, you know, the looks you get, that feeling yeah. of like everyone's shutting up when you come in the room because there's Phil, the the BLM guy. So um, it just, it was a slow progression of just like, it just doesn't feel right. Um, and the church that we tried to go to that was more racial, um, trying to be more racial di- racially diverse and uh-huh. work on social justice issues and stuff. Um, we just still just didn't feel right about it. And my wife had actually one day we were just driving around doing errands and she just kind of goes, you know, I just don't really feel comfortable going to church full time again yet. And I was like, Oh, thank you. She was also feeling the same reservations I was. Um, Cause Good. I had started playing drums again at this new church. Oh. We had the, the new, like new member class and you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, we were like, cause we were just like, Oh, we just got to get away from that one church. Um, but it just slowly came to the realization of like, nah, it's just, church in general, we're kind of struggling with. So yeah, Steven, I'm going to go off script for just a second. Yeah. Um, so as musicians in this room, all three of us, um, did the music 
touch you when you were playing? Did 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 you feel a connection? Okay. Um, so I'm gonna assume, and this is the struggle I'm dealing with right now, is I am dealing heavily with the struggle of not being able to go into a church and play, and not because I can't, but because I'm choosing not to at this point. But does that does that pull really affect you? Is that maybe part of what's keeping you from from pulling away completely from just kind of exiting yourself from the church in general and, and belief in general is that pull towards wanting to play again, kind of keeping you there. Um, it was there for a while. Um, okay. that's kind of why I, we were trying that new church yeah. um, and kind of started playing drums again. Cause they were playing very like progressive music and I was like all for it. I was like, this is, this stuff's dope. I want to, <laughs> I want to yeah. play it. Uh-huh. Um, and, but it slowly faded um, when I realized how manipulative worship music really is. Where, well, not manipulative in a bad sense. It's just meant to, it's meant to pull emotions out of you to yeah. get those. Um, they, they designed the songs that way. So like when I'm playing the drums and I'm doing those big old fills and, you know, building up the, the rising, <laughs> that, the, the, the that builds at the end. Yeah. Yeah. So like I'm <laughs> feeling the goosebumps cause I'm doing the build, you know, it's, it's that experience of like, you are the one creating that atmosphere. So you also feel it. Um, and I, yeah, I do miss some of that. Cause that was just very, you know, it was almost like, almost felt like meditation for me. Cause it was yeah. just like, so I could clear my mind. It was just great to, um, kind of escape into that. So, um, but now I'm just trying to fi- find like what other ways I can escape or what things I can escape into that I did with, you know, playing drums and worship. Yeah. So yeah. sorry, Stephen. I just, I wanted to go off script on no. that one. <laughs> no, I think it's, it's funny. I, I heard, I saw somebody post on Facebook one time and I might be wrong on the cord, but they, uh, someone was like, like crying during a worship song and, and they were making like, the meme was like, it's just a G chord. Like, so anytime, <laughs> like anytime, like I'm watching a movie and like, it's a, it hits a sad part. I, I just look over at my wife. I'm like, it's just a G chord. It's just a G chord. Uh, so that's, uh, oh, that's good. But it's true. I mean, you, you said it right. Like that worship, there's a there's a purpose for worship. But a lot of times, the music, and that's why it's become a production. It's 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 there to be able to bring people in, and and then you're right. It's the drums. It's the it's the guitar. It's the bass that that brings everybody in. And then you do get emotional. I get emotional during certain songs like Celine Dion. That, that that's not that's <laughs> not God. Tell, that's just music. Don't tell music. people that. Don't tell people that. Celine Dion's awesome. Please. It's, you know, it's come on, go to the, go to the next question. No, I'm going to omit that part. I'm going <laughs> to, well, what would it take to get you back or to return to the church? And it could be a hard pass, but what, what would it take you to, you know, to get back there? Yeah, that's, that's the question that my wife and I have been um, debating lately. And um, it's one of those, where I think like for now in my current state, church just isn't in the, in the, cards um because i'm questioning kind of basically everything i was taught um and church and it, i just don't really um yeah just the way that church functions and the way they go about trying to get into your lives is just very um cult-like <laughs> there's yeah. cult tendencies in there um as much as they try to not admit it, but um, like church discipline or, um, you know, discouraging you from, you know, disagreeing with parts of the Bible, you know, you take it for the whole thing or not at all um, Mm -hmm. kind of mentality. Um, I don't know. I would, you know, I was on the fence there. I don't know if you guys have heard of like the restore church in Austin. Um, I've been following them. They're a pretty affirming. um, They're fully affirming church all about, you know, um, women in leadership and queer people involved yeah. in leadership in the church, not just That's sitting awesome. in a pew. Yeah. I've actually heard um, of them. Yeah. Uh, super, super cool guys, um, and people. And, um, I was kind of like, well, if, if there was going to be a church, this might be that. But at the same time though, like, I don't know if I'm just like, I put so much of my identity in like, the community of church. Like I clung so hard to going to church every week and making sure that everyone knew 
how hard I was working at being a Christian. Like it just always felt like a, you know, um, a constant, like upward battle. I don't know. <laughs> it's no, no, I, I know exactly where you're going. You felt like you had yeah. to please everybody every week. And just walking through the door, you felt like you had to please the greeter or you had to please the pastor. If you shook hands with him or you, or you, if you're on stage, you had to please all the other people in the band. And I got to feel that way quite a bit too. And it, it's weird because then you go into the trenches, like what you did, you go into the actual area where people are protesting black lives matter and, and supporting or, or, you know, against it. One of the two you're in that, in the mix and you're caring about people and you've, you, the, the, the switch flipped and you started realizing that that's what, that's what you should be doing is talking to people and sharing, you know, good with people and, and moving the good out of you into other people. And I think you're right. The church really, we even said it in our introduction. When, when we say it in our introduction, it's the church has lost its personal connection to people. It's become more of a business than it's really, than it's actually a connection to people. And when, like you said, when you walk into that church, you, I feel a pressure. You feel a pressure. I'm, I'm, I'm putting my feelings upon you, but I felt the pressure when I would walk through the doors, especially when I was uh, on stage. I felt like I had to be a certain person. I had to give that certain aura or people weren't going to respect me in that church completely. Yeah, totally. See, the thing is like, I've, I went to the church same church since I was 15 and everybody knew me as this crazy person that always spoke my mind. So I never felt that pressure. I was just always myself, but that's what apparently burnt my bridges was me being honest and being truthful to myself, you know, 24 seven. But I always did feel uncomfortable walking through those doors, which is what we talked about in our last episode, uh, Craig, we said we should ne- no one should ever feel uncomfortable walking through the doors of church. Any it has church. become about any church. It's become a building. That, it's been more building focused than, and, and another word that we constantly say in almost every episode is it, it's not about really community anymore. Um, which I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I want to go off real off cuff real quick on the, on this next question. Cause I, I, I think, I think you'll be able to answer this. Well, um, what do you think the church can do to become better? <sighs> I mean, oh, I'm trying to remember how I was going to phrase this. Um, the church just needs to, um, okay, let me get my, what would make uh, it better for you? What would, what, <laughs> what, what would make yeah. it better for you? Like what, 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 it, just a small thing. What one thing do you think would make it better? for, for uh, you, uh, your, your type of person going back in there like me or, or Steven. Um, Oh, the, the idea of the constant, like feeling that you have to, the, um, to convert everybody, like that it's this life Mm. or death battle for everyone's soul. And like, Mm -hmm. it is just like this, like they feed it to you in such a way. And so um, it opens these like floodgates of, well, I'm just speaking truth in the light and the darkness doesn't like the, I saw a post about this, you know, that I saw someone like mention this and that who is, you know, very uh, prominent in the church. And they were just like, the darkness doesn't like the light. And so they're always going to be, you know, offended or, upset when we expose the dark or we expose them for, you know, the evilness or whatever. Um, and so it opens the floodgates of just scuffing off any criticism or, um, hate towards their, you can use the word hate. That's fine. (laughs) Yeah. Their hate towards people because they're like, no, this is a life or death. This is for your soul. Like I'm doing this because I love you, but it's, you know, because it mainly it makes them uncomfortable and it, kind of threatens their little social bubble. Yeah. So for them, it feels like, no, I'm just like, I know this is right, even though you don't think it is. And I don't care how it makes you feel. And so that idea of always wanting to convert people, like the idea that we have to save as many people as possible, instead of just going out and being with people and loving them and helping them where they're at. And that's, they always preach that, but then they, <laughs> then they turn their back on it. Um, yeah. because they're so focused on exposing the darkness or exposing evil and converting yeah. these lost people. 
Um, they turn their back on it, but they chastise <laughs> people for doing it like they did you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Imagine if, if Christianity did, was not a fear-based system, but was a love-based system. Imagine, oh, the yeah, even. imagine how large, complex. Yeah, stop, I mean, stop talking nonsense. Stop it. Just right. stop it right now. Just <laughs> but stop like that is what it's become. It's become a fear-based system of saying, if you do not believe in Jesus, you're going to hell. And it turns people to love Jesus in the wrong way. Yeah. Instead of actually loving him. And then that's why you see a lot of people also leave the church because they grew up fearing him and then they don't actually have a relationship with him. They just feared hell, not him. Right. And yeah. And convert people. And then to, um, like, uh, oh my gosh, I'm <laughs> having brain farts all night tonight. Um, oh, it's okay. We all have them. We all have brain farts. And farts. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, to convert people and then, and then to say that everyone else is attacking them because they're doing the right thing. That's, yeah, that's what I was trying that's, So that's it's too. convert. And that's that martyr complex that I've grown to just loathe and hate is just this, like we're they're out, they're attacking our faith. They're attacking Christianity. They want us out. They, they want to kill us all. And it's like, <laughs> once you get out of the fog of the brainwash, you realize like no one really cares <laughs> that much about what your religion is. As long as you're not trying to like oppress them or push it on them like bingo no one really cares <laughs> bingo. Do your thing. well I, this is phil this has been an extremely awesome conversation i really appreciate you coming on and, and just sharing your story i know obviously leaving the church that you've been at for years um you've as we started before we actually signed in today but you've burned some bridges we've burned some bridges um but you've also feel like you're almost released from that. And I appreciate you coming on and sharing that because it's not easy to do that kind of stuff. Um, we know about our podcast. If people want to reach out to you and talk to you and maybe get your experiences, maybe some deeper information, where could they reach you? Um, yeah, I mean, I have an Instagram. You can reach me at, at Philip Allen visuals. Um, that's one way, or you just find me on Facebook, Phil Kinnison. Um, I think my profile is locked just because I had people <laughs> trolling me. Um, like I would post on like a Fox news post to troll them and they would like come post on like week old posts just to like mess with me. So I locked it, but you can still message me through there. Okay. But <laughs> cool. Well, thanks again for your time. We really appreciate it. Yes. And I appreciate you coming on and Thank telling you. your story. <laughs>